DJs for the last two decades have been uh, experimenting in different ways of playing the music. One day, this magic miracle happened. Serato was born. Here's a company that came together out of nowhere with like the golden ticket. People looking at me like, how could you? You know, you're a purist. I started thinking about the sound waves. What happens when a needle goes through the groove of a piece of vinyl? It's all very well having an idea. It's quite another making a product that works robustly in the real world. I was a late adapter. I learned the, the detriment of purism as we know it. I'm a sonic puppeteer controlling the masses with a uh, sonic frequency scratch traffic controller. We didn't even give a damn what it was called. We just knew it worked. Can I do it and make it sound and feel like what I've been doing with vinyl? I thought I could do that with a, with a digital waveform. Because if it doesn't, then fuck it. I don't want to be a part of this. The way Steve and I met was uh, we were both doing the same computer science degree at Auckland University. We are both kind of like super nerds and we both liked to um, work on tricky problems. One day he showed me this thing which was taking some music and changing its speed without the pitch going up or down. And he said it was in real time, which meant it was processing the sound as fast as it needed to to play it. That's when I said, wow, that's actually really good. That could be a product and we got him and his mother and me and my dad together in a room and we started Serato. We didn't want to start a company. We didn't want to be in business. We just had a thing and we wanted to sell it to someone. Everyone who heard it thought, wow, this is amazing. It was a product looking for a home um, and we were taking it to hardware companies in Japan trying to figure out which company we can sell the whole thing to and they can put it on a chip and stick it in their hardware. None of them wanted it. Someone said, go show it to, you know, these, this guy at Sony Picture Studios. When we showed it to them, they were like, holy shit, that is, that's awesome. We need that and we need it now. When we showed it to them, they were like, holy shit, that is, that's awesome. We need that, and we need it now. My name's Tale, and I'm from Serato Audio Research, and I'm here today to show you about pitching time. You can uh, do time compression, expansion, pitch shifting, and you can really do it with any kind of audio. Well, at the time, David Lynch's quote was, since pitching time, my life is fine. I use Serato pitching time uh, as a studio plugin for years, even before I got the Scratch Live application. That was the main way that I used to time stretch and time compress vocals. It was clean, seamless. I first came across Pitch and Time when I was using Pro Tools, making hip hop beats. I could pitch anything to, to the key of the sample. We were off to a good start, and then, of course, we developed Scratch Live. My name is A Track, playing tonight in Auckland using Scratch Live. So um, you'll be hearing some scratches. I started thinking about the sound waves and how what happens when a needle goes through the groove of a piece of vinyl and how that moving it backwards and forwards creates the sound that it makes. This is a, a crab scratch right here. When you see me use many fingers on the crossfader, it's called a crab. I thought I could do that with a, with a digital waveform. So I wrote this piece of software which basically resamples audio uh, a thousand times a second and ended up with a hacked together program which was on an old laptop. You put a CD in the drive and with the mouse you would scratch. Uh, we were playing with that for a couple of weeks before we kind of thought maybe we could turn this into a product. I was always a turntable cat cutting it up back in the streets of the Bronx. So we was always looking for different innovations to kind of bring our skill level up to the next level, to the next level, to the next level. My boy, Grand Mixer DXT, brings me some little box. They said, yo, 
this is gonna change everything. I'm like, how is this little box gonna change everything? Look, it comes with vinyl. That sparked my interest right away. Got it up and running and we were like, ooh, ah. We were amazed. And at the time, I didn't know who made it. We didn't give a damn what it was called. We just knew it worked. If you want to be able to know where you are on a record or you know anywhere, you need some kind of map and every part has to be different. It kind of almost naturally suggests randomness because randomness is always different. One of the common methods of generating randomness is this, this idea of pseudo-random noise. Genuinely random noise isn't necessarily going to be unique. But it turns out that pseudo-random noise has this quite elegant quality that it guarantees uniqueness everywhere. So you just need to make sure that it's long enough to fill a record, and that ended up being the noise map. Hello and welcome to this demonstration video. We'd like to show you a new concept that we're working on. The concept consists of three different components. The first of which is a normal set of turntables connected to a computer. I mean, I think one of the really big drivers in the really early days was uh, that it was being picked up by touring DJs. It really solved this problem of traveling with vinyl. And there was this one DJ, a guy called DJ AM, who he lived in LA, had a residency in Vegas, and the fact that he could then go to his residency with just carry on was such a game changer for him. I remember doing a tour of Asia, and by the time I got home, I spent about $3,500 in extra baggage charges. I knew I was in trouble. Right out of the box, just Serato was, was, uh, was a game changer. Anytime you had a gig where you had to go up like three flights of stairs, that gig sucked. It was getting to the point where I would like be on the train in the UK, like traveling with like 200 bags of records. Carrying crates and crates of records. I said, you know what, something has to give. There was a video of me scratching on Serato, Scratch Live, that a lot of the other DJs saw, and that became a catalyst for a lot of other people adopting it. I remember AM calling me because he saw that video. I was on tour with Kanye. I, I'm talking to my boy and he's like, yo, is it for real? Like, I saw you scratch. It works? For real, it works? First gig that I did with it, I'll never forget it. I mean, I get up there, no crates, just one little tiny bag, flip open the laptop. The expression on everyone's face was like utter confusion. Plugged it all up, told the other DJ on the set I was good to go, and he was like, what the fuck are you doing? The whole front row, you know, they were just looking at me, mind-blowing emojis all coming out of their ears, man. It was like, it was crazy. I was literally probably one of the very first people to travel around the country with Serato, and I got a lot of flex. I thought it was the corniest thing that I've ever seen. I was like, who, who wants to play digital music on turntables, yeah. so I was like, why would you do this? And I was one of those guys at first, like, nah, man, spinning with a computer, it ain't real, like, nah, I'm good. At first, you know, I was just like, okay, bringing a laptop out and all that kind of stuff, I was just kind of like, oh, what about it? But the crazy thing was all the backlash and the hating. And the snobbery of people look at me and turn their nose up at me. And boy, did I catch flack. Oh, Jay, you're faking the funk. How could you get rid of the vinyl? Vinyl purists basically thought it was cheating because it was a little too convenient and it made, you know, a way for people who never DJed before to just get a computer and rock, you know, people because it was something new. People didn't understand it. People looking at me like, how could you? You know, you're a purist. You know, people just couldn't believe it. They were like, you're using Wait a minute, explain this to me. You're using a fucking laptop to play music on vinyl records that you don't ever have to take off the turntables for hours. Yes. Unless you're doing something bleeding edge that's rattling the cage of, of the norm, you're not really doing it right. 
my good friend DJ AM. He said, yo, Mike, check this program out. It's called Serato. And all you need is two, two records, two time code records. And I was like, what? There's a sound that's stored on the computer and the turntable send a signal to tell the computer how to play back that sound. So he called me like four different times to check on me, to ask me if I was using Serato. Hey, you using Serato yet? I'm like, nah, man, I'm like, I'm, you know, I refuse to make that leap. You know, I'm gonna keep it real. I'm gonna keep it 100 with the vinyl. The thing was, can I do it and make it sound and feel like what I've been doing with vinyl? Because if it doesn't, then fuck it. I don't want to be a part of this until they get it right. It's all very well having an idea that, yeah, you can put a tone on a record and it's quite another making a product that works robustly in the real world. He was telling me about this show that he did. Because I did a show, I didn't pick up my needle once and rocked it. And I was like, what? You didn't pick your needle up once. What, what does that mean? So it sounds just like a normal turntable, like this. But instead of the sound coming off the record, a signal is going into the computer from the record and that's telling the computer how to play back that sound. It had to sound as good as real vinyl, but it also had to feel as good as real vinyl. So we had to work really hard with horrible, horrible computer code to get the latency of the system down to the point where it was actually a faithful reproduction of vinyl. You know, I got a call from Revolution and he started telling me about this thing, Serato. And I was like, yo, man, I'm not fucking around, Jeff. This, this shit is legit, 100%. This had to easily be the first week that Serato came out. And I immediately drove downtown Philly to the record store and I bought it. They had it, I bought it, I came home, I set it up, started messing with it, thought it was absolutely amazing. I go out to LA to do a show and I take Serato and Revolution comes to sound check. And he's like, how is it? And I'm like, man, I can play all of the records that I want and do the whole set, but when it comes time for me to do a DJ routine, I pull out the regular vinyl. And he was like, why? And I said, there's a level of latency. So he goes into the computer and realized that I had the buffer set all the way to the wrong side. So he switches the buffer back, and now I'm like, oh my God, this is just like my records. My first introduction to Serato was with Grandmaster Flash. And I was like, wow, this is, this is gonna be a game changer. I started the process of burning vinyl and CDs, because I had like 50, 60,000 records. I was working like 12 hours a day <laughs> burning music, because I, I couldn't believe this program was that, that amazing. I remember we did the, um, the Scratch tour for the, for, the, uh, for the movie Scratch. I think it was uh, Q-Bird, myself, Jazzy J, DJ Flair. I was the only one using vinyl, and all the other DJs were using Serato. When they got on and, you know, plugged their laptops up, you know, they, they set sounded really nice, nice and clean. But when it was time for me to get on, once I played the record, the, the speakers started rumbling. You could see the sound man in the back trying to um, adjust the um, equipment to, to the vinyl. So, you know, I, I eventually switched over and, and I'm glad I did. So back in the day, I went, when Scratch Live had just come out, and I wasn't actually working at the company, but me and most of the other people around me didn't have a computer to test it on. So Serato was giving us not only the NSL1 and some records to use, but also a computer full of music. And we get out and we plug the computer in and go, oh, this is cool. But because we didn't really have laptops, the concept of digital DJing was still so foreign at that time. At that time, I didn't even own a laptop, so there was no way for me to, to use Serato. Making that leap from vinyl records to, to a computer just didn't sound that organic to me. Tell me about this new computerized program they tell me called Serato. Serato, yeah, what Serato, is it's, it's actually, it's an amazing technology. It's a computer, which is your musical library. And it incorporates your turntables, and I still use my two turntables, and I use two records, but I use control records. They are time-coded records, and they read the files just like 
I was playing them off a record. So I'm able to scratch, I'm able to, to bring the record back. You hear all the sounds that a record would sound in actual time. You know, everyone was talking about Serato and this is the new wave. And, and I was like, okay, I need that. So I remember copying it then and it kind of was just such a game changer to be able to carry all your music with you wherever you were around the world. Adam was pounding it into my head saying, yo, you need to use this Serato program, bro. Trust me, once you learn how to use this, you're gonna be a beast. So, I kind of just, um, I turned myself into a beast. It's all over, boy. Show em hell. It's all over, boy. Show em hell. It's all over, boy. Show em hell. So when I came in, Scratch Live was like on fire, and it was just insane because the team was so small, and it was we were barely controlled chaos at that time. Here's a company that came together out of nowhere with like the golden ticket, the Willy Wonka golden ticket, and we're like, yo, we got this idea. But yo, who's this motley crew of people stepping to the plate? But they dominated the whole system. You work in New Zealand and people would think Serato is a cafe or something, you know, and going to Nan and people would see in a Serato t-shirt. Like, oh my God, you work at Serato, you know Serato. And it was just, a, it opened my eyes to just how big what we were doing was. I carried quite a bit of purism with me, meaning you're passing judgment on technology you don't understand. You're passing judgment on tools that aren't in your arsenal or whatever. So I was that quintessential analog guy, you know? I just had no vocabulary for it, and it just totally opened my mind up to the idea that DJing doesn't have to be rooted in playing vinyl records. I did my own Googles, and I was like, Serato, Scratch Live, what is this? And then I discovered the cue points. I was like, oh, the cue points bring me back to this certain part of the song. This is dope. I mean, it's, it's not till you really think about it and you go, well, you know, in every city there's probably 50 working DJs, you multiply that out in the world, and actually this product's bloody well used and liked by a lot of people. Jim Appel, DJ Enough, AKA Suficiente, and I got my man Just Dizzle from Paris, France. Donc moi, euh, j'ai toujours été un, un geek. Ouais, je suis tombé sur Scratch Live vers 2004, que j'ai acheté tout de suite et quelques mois après. Je me suis rendu compte que le plus grand DJ de hip-hop du monde, DJ Jazzy Jeff, utilisait le, le même programme. Donc, euh, vous savez, euh, quand vos idoles utilisent le même matériel que vous, du coup, ça vous, euh, ça vous booste, ça vous motive. Je me suis découvert quand ジャンルを書けるようになって、なんかFinalmente llegó una caja de Cerato a mi poder, donde instalé el software, probé la caja y pude darme cuenta que funcionaba mejor de todos los software que había probado y ahí me quedé hasta ahora, ya van 14 años. Praticamente en una Cerata donde c'era un DJ que sonaba soltanto con dos vinili y una especie de box. Es la mi primera experiencia con el Cerato Box. C'è stato come un amore a prima vista, cioè nel senso. The, the early days of Serato and all the digital formats was like jumping out of a plane and just hoping that the uh, the, the, the cord was gonna open up the parachute and that you was gonna land safely. But when it did, you know, you just wanted to just get right back up there and jump again and pull the cord again. There would be times when I had to tell my MC, just keep talking, keep talking, reboot the computer, reboot the computer. I think also too the big crazy turning point for me was as a guy who was on board from the jump. When I heard Kanye say Serato in a song, you ain't got no fucking Yeezy in Serato. Like, okay, it's official. You know what I mean? I was like, this is, this is it. So when Steve and AJ came to the United States, and I met these cats, and I'm like, these are young guys. These 
these guys are wet behind the ears still. And they created this phenomenal product, them giving me the respect as a pioneer. And I'm like, wow, me giving them the respect as innovators just kind of meshed. You know, it wasn't like we were these genius businessmen with this grand plan and we went out and we conquered the world. It was, we were incredibly lucky, had a really good attitude that allowed us to take advantage of those circumstances when they occurred. I feel my reward is seeing those people who doubted it and doubted me then come on board and now it's, it's their main go-to way of DJing. And I feel proud that I can honestly say that I was one of the first. It changed my life, man. It's made, it's, it's made me um, a better DJ. It's pushed my creative process to its limit. And I'm still pushing with it. And they're still rocking with me and I'm still rocking with them. I think my favorite thing about Serato is finding out that really good DJs, anyone who gets really good at DJing, is actually kind of a nerd at heart. Serato inadvertently provided to the DJs community around the world was this sense of camaraderie of, or just the sense of discovering this new thing that we're all excited about. It's just been, yeah, really interesting to watch it grow and just how big it's grown, you know? I mean, staff-wise and even just use across the world. Us and Rain at the start when I started, now it's us and everybody. I don't know if I think I would have conceived Serato. Things have to evolve in, for the, in order for things to move. Um, I think that is the perfect evolution of technology mixed with the tradition of turntables. And I never would have thought I would become a full-time DJ, you know, but I did, and that was because of Serato, 100%. They always lose my clothes, but I always have my music and my DJ stuff on my back, so thank you, thank you, thank you, and my chiropractor thanks you. Thank God for Serato because, yeah, that was, it saved my life, trust me. It saved my life and it saved my back. <laughs> Otherwise I'd be here with the fucking Zimmer frame right now, so. <laughs> And I look at all of these DJs using Serato now, and I'm like, y'all wanted to kick my ass. Y'all wanted to lynch me. They wanted to stone me. Like back in the days, like Jazzy J. There he is, there's that fake ass old school pioneer, stone his ass. And now if anyone's like, no man, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't really fuck with Serato. Really? What were you, in the fucking Stone Age? Mm-hmm. <laughs>